Bible says in Revelation chapter 2 verse 7, He was an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give to eat from the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. Revelation chapter 2 verse 11 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Revelation chapter 2 verse 17 says, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. To him who overcomes, I will give some of the hidden manna to eat, and I will give him a white stone. And on the stone, a new name written which no one knows except him who receives it. And in Revelation chapter 2 verse 26, it also says, And he who overcomes and keeps my works until the end, to him I will give power over the nations. Revelation chapter 3 verse 5 says, He who overcomes shall be clothed in white garments, and I will not blot out his name from the book of life, but I will confess his name before my Father and before his angels. Revelation chapter 3 verse 12, it also says, He who overcomes, I will make him a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go out no more. I will write on him the name of my God and the name of the city of God, the new Jerusalem, which comes down out of heaven from my God, and I will write on him my new name. Lastly, Revelation chapter 3, verse 21 says, To him who overcomes, I will grant to sit with me on my throne, as I also overcome and sat down with my father on his throne. We can see what most concerns Christ, what is most important to him at the end. When the pressures will be more intense than they have ever been in the history of man. When Satan is lining up all of his armies, all of his weaponry, the devil will mount a persecution against people to such an extent that the whole earth will be thrown into convulsions, the likes of which the world has never seen. Christ, like any good leader who sees what is coming, will take steps to prepare his people. He will focus their attention on what is most important to survive and grow during that period. This is why he talks about what he does to the churches in the messages in Revelation 2. And the word translated as overcomes can just as easily and correctly be and is perhaps better translated concurs. We are involved in a war against Satan and his demons, against a world he designed and built through men, and against ourselves who carry with us the self-centered nature, habits, and attitudes of Satan and his system. Thus Christ's concern for us as we approach the end is whether we are carrying through in the warfare, continuing in well-doing and injuring to the end, because Satan is bringing about every pressure to make us ready. Loyalty is not a quality that we indulge with to any great degree. Our cultures tend to stress individuality, doing our own thing. Loyalty's synonym is faithful. It means faithful in allegiance to one's lawful sovereign. It means to be steadfast in affection, to adhere to the performance of duty to be conscientious, to give firm resistance to any temptation to desert or betray. Can we see what the works of Christ is so concerned about? This is why every message says, I know your works. He does not say, I know your profession, or I know your desires. Neither does he say, I know your sincerity, or I know your wishes. He says, I know your works. Why? Because works prove what a person is doing with his knowledge, time, and energies. Titus chapter 1 verse 16 says, They profess to know God, but in works they deny Him, being abominable, disobedient, and disqualified. Notice that they profess to know God. Christ says, I see what you are doing. I know your works. Why are works so important? They prove where our heart is. They prove our loyalty. They prove whether we are conscientious and faithful. They prove whether there is fidelity to Christ, whether we are steadfast in our affections for the one we are going to marry. Many believe that we do not have to qualify for the kingdom of God. It is true that works cannot justify us. They cannot wipe out our sins. However, it does not follow that because they cannot save us. They are of no importance. Recall that James uses Abraham, the father of the faithful, the father of the loyal, the conscientious, as the illustration that faith, that faith without works is dead. 
living faith works. Jesus says, I know your works. Revelation 2 and 3 are an examination of our works because Christ wants to see whether we believe Him. Living faith exhibits itself in works. It is a test of our faith. If we are faithful, we will be working overcoming Satan, the world, and our self-centeredness. That is what works accomplish.